This is Lisa Condit, and boy, what a week we've all had. Things have really been heating up over at the Hanover Theater, you know, everywhere. But I am just completely taken by how grateful and thankful we are for everybody who has just helped the Hanover Theater survive and thrive, especially in this area. And I'm proud to be from Massachusetts, from the Boston area, from Worcester, and be a part of the Hanover Theater's success. You know, boy, we had our fifth anniversary celebration with Diana Krall. We had a great video that, you know, our local friends, Andrea and Kaz over there at AA Films, did for us. It was just beautiful. We had all sorts of people featured on that video. Diana Krall's performance, I believe that the review said that she sizzled. We always love the word sizzle when it comes with the Hanover Theater. And then My idol, Joyce Kohawick, and yes, she does have a website, Joyce'sChoices.com, was with us on Thursday night for our big Broadway preview party, and that was such a fun event with everybody coming out and just getting away from all the troubles of the world, letting art lift us up, and we really had a nice preview of the six different Broadway shows that we are going to have in 2013-14. I want to share a little bit of that with you, and later on in the program, we will be playing excerpts from the Q&A that Joyce had with two of the Jersey Boys cast cast members. Oh, what a night that was. But just so you know, so we can put it all in perspective, our Broadway season next year kicks off with this really hot musical, Memphis the Musical. It's won awards. It was one of the best musicals of the year a couple of years ago when it was on Broadway. And that kicks off our season November 1st, 2nd, and 3rd. And Again, it says turn up that dial from the underground dance clubs of 1950s Memphis, Tennessee. And you know, when you hear some of the music, you're going to start tapping your foot right away. And that leads us right into our holiday show that's part of our Broadway subscription season this year. And that's Cirque Dreams Holidays, November 22nd, 23rd, and 24th. This show is now in its fifth year, and it is stuffed with, quote, so much holiday cheer and audacious Axe, Scrooge would exit with a big old smile on his face. Well, that's just to warm you all up for our Christmas Carol, you know, Troy Siebel's adaptation that comes later on in December. Also part of our Broadway subscription series is Sister Act. Now, we just had Whoopi Goldberg at the theater, and that was really fabulous. And we can't wait to see this feel-good musical that, of course, is inspired by the award-winning movie sister act and that starts off our new 2014 year correctly and on the right track january 2nd 3rd and 4th and then the show that we're talking about all the time because we just love it and we have it for just two weeks but that's a big deal for us at the hanover theater is jersey boys and that's the 2006 tony award-winning best musical about rock and roll hall of famers the four seasons and joyce is going to talk a little bit about that then of course we have one of our classic musicals of all time man of la mancha at the end of february beginning of march and we close with yet another whoopi inspired musical ghost the musical and so interesting we have some interviews with some of the creators from Ghost as well, and that finishes off our Broadway season June 5th, 6th, and 7th. So we are going to cut now to hear a little bit about Joyce interviewing some of the cast members from Jersey Boys. Jersey Boys is going to premiere right here at the Hanover Theater for two weeks only in January, January 21st through February 2nd, 2014, and that's all part of the next season. But today, we are very happy to share with you this special advance sneak peek of the show, and I know that you're going to want to subscribe now for the very best locations. Jersey Boys here at the Hanover is really, I think, a perfect fit for our community. We've got some very savvy theater audiences here. You've all been to the theater many times. You know when it's great, you know when it's not, and if you don't, I will help you along those lines. Uh, The show is uh, much more than a true story. It's it's an amazingly powerful true story. It's a true rags to riches tale of four guys from Jersey who despite incredible odds hit the big time. They became huge stars. I remember seeing this show for the first time in New York City 
And I was just amazed. I have to say it's almost a perfect musical if there is such a thing. And so many people I know I've sent to this show. My mother has seen it a couple of times. My daughter's seen it. I've sent neighbors. I've sent relatives to see it. If you've got to pick out one show, this is the one I always say, this is a no-fail show. I learned so many things about the Four Seasons I didn't know before. I knew all the songs, but I had no idea what was behind them. And the way the story and the songs line up so that these songs are kind of filled out in a way. They are new when you hear them again for, you know, the umpteenth time time, but it's like you never heard them before. People sing along with them. It's just a big, rousing, incredible event. Very strong storyline. The show never stops moving. Tons of moving parts just like this. There's a lot that they cram into this stage. So right now, we want to give you a sneak peek of this show that I've been standing here raving about. Let it speak for itself. Here we go. It's such a great show, such great music. We're going to take a short break now, and when we return, Joyce Kohaywick is going to continue her conversation with Matt Daly, who plays Tommy DeVito, and John Michael Diaz, who plays Frankie Valley in the upcoming Jersey Boys performances at the Hanover Theater. Stay tuned for more on WCRN, 8.30 a.m. Welcome back. This is Lisa Condit, and thank you for joining us on Behind the Scenes at the Hanover Theater. We're going to continue our conversation as Joyce Kohaywick was hosting our preview party on Thursday night, the Spring Euphoria, where we were lucky enough to have two different cast members, Matt Bailey, who plays Tommy DeVito, and John Michael Diaz, who plays Frankie Valley, at the Hanover Theater for a sneak peek and a Q&A and a couple of surprise performances. So we're pleased to bring you back as Joyce continues the conversation on behind the scenes at the Hanover Theater. This is such an emotional show too. I mean, is there a moment for you, and I know you do this show, you know, kind of every night, eight shows, you're on the road, etc. but is there a moment for you that stands out as a, as a number or a moment that you look forward to that is the high point of the evening from, from your point of view as performers? Yeah, for me, there's... Um the big song in the show is Can't Take My Eyes Off You. And the moment that it happens in the show is this, it's sort of this wonderful build up. And if you haven't seen it yet, um, you'll see what I mean when you get there and it still won't ruin it for you because the moment, the way it's scripted and the way it's built up is just perfect. And I've never done the show one time. I've been in the show for six years. I've never started this song without hearing someone in the audience go, this is the song. Like, <laughs> every time. And people are standing up in the middle of the show at the end of this song. And it's not really for me. It's for the music and for the experience, experience and, like, their um, identification with what this music means to them. And that's why the show is incredible. Mm -hmm. And that's my favorite moment, for sure. How about you, Matt? I think for me is um, intermission, actually. <laughs> um, Tommy comes out right from the get-go, and it is like being shot out of a cannon for act one. You are talking to the audience, you're changing clothes, you're playing the guitar, you're you know, seeing a whole bunch of songs in a row. It's, ex it's exhausting, yeah. so my intermission is more about just changing my clothes and re getting my breath back. Taking a and, nap. <laughs> and getting ready for act two. Um, Right. Because it, Act One is you yeah know, really intense. I mean, this thing boom, is really right intense. Out of the gates. We've alluded to the book and just um, how beautifully scripted this thing is. You know, this, it's it's really a perfect marriage between the story and the songs. I mean, because the songs literally grow right out of the story. I mean, this is how they wrote them. This is when they wrote them. These are the circumstances. Just tell us a little bit about uh, the authors of the book. Yeah, the best thing to me about this show is that it's not one of those cheesy book uh, musicals that it's like 
oh, now we've got to figure out how we're going to fit this song into the show and like wedge it in and be like, Mamma Mia! I mean, you know, all of a sudden there's just like this random song and you're like, wait, we're making this happen. These songs come in the order of how they happen in their lives and most of the time they'll be, we'll be singing Sherry and it's in a studio or in the live performance. So the audience's perspective of the songs changes. So sometimes you'll be... It, like at a private moment watching something happen. Sometimes you'll be in the grandstands of this huge auditorium when we're doing Sherry or Dawn or these, all these other songs. It's, it's really unique the way they've structured it. And you get four different viewpoints from the show. You get Frankie's viewpoint, Bob, Tommy, and Nick. So you, you hear four different versions of the story as it goes along, and which I, is neat. It's, it's so funny, too. Rick, um, Rick Ellis and Marshall Brickman um, who, who have done a, a number of comedies and movies and things, um, people are surprised when they come to see the show that they're not just seeing these nostalgic songs, but they're laughing, they're crying, they, they get really involved in the story because they've written these four guys and the women in the show and the other characters that show up so well, and, and each person has their own way of talking, and, uh, and the jokes just keep coming throughout the whole show and people are surprised. Real. And I think we have actually a message from the authors of the book of Jersey Boys. Let's listen to that right now on video. I don't think we actually do. I don't think we actually sent that. No. <laughs> so the message... Um, See, I could never be in a show like this. You know, it's got to be crack timing right to there. Right? Okay. But yeah, we don't have that, but we have other things. But we if have they other did things. have a message, they would say something like, you're in for a treat, get your tickets. <laughs> they would. <laughs> okay, one of the things I have noticed about this show, though, is that guys love this show. I mean, you've never seen happier men walking out of a musical than Jersey Boys. For once, it's, you know, the husband's bringing the wives instead of the wives dragging the husbands. Honey, we're going to the theater. No, this show, men like. Why is that? I think it's sort of, uh, I always say it's sort of like a Sopranos meets MTV behind the music singing. <laughs> it's like, kind of like that where you, you know, like I said before, you see everything. You see, there's some, some bad words, as we call it, authentic Jersey language, which I find the gentlemen tend to enjoy a little more. And, you know, there's something for everybody in the way that, you know, it appeals to so many different kinds of people, but the men usually drag the wives for I got sure. stopped in the Providence airport by two very large men, and they were like, excuse me, excuse me, can I, can I talk to you? And I was like, I, yeah, sure, what, what's the problem? And they're like, can I ask you a question? And I was like, I thought they were gonna take me into some small room and like search me Rough or something. Right. And they were like, are you, are you in Jersey Boys? And I was like, yeah. And then I realized I was carrying my Jersey Boys bag and they had just read it on there. They were like, man, that is a great show. <laughs> We're, we're, uh, we're transferring prisoners to the Providence prison, and I just wanted to tell you that that is a great show. And I was like, oh, thank you. That is a tough endorsement. That, yep. is, that is really cool. But you referred to uh, the language, you know, some of this uh, low-down language. Is this a show you can bring the kids to or not? Or what do you want to say if, about that? I think if you, if you let them watch anything on HBO or MTV, it's probably okay. <laughs> it, but, you know... Use your discretion. It's not for little kids. They'd be a little bit bored anyway hearing that. But yeah, I mean, if yes okay. and no. All right, so it's up to you. You know your point. kids, so be be forewarned. Yeah. Um, different audiences are different as you travel across the country with this show. I know you brought this show to Boston. Tell us about Boston audiences, because I think you know. I think Boston and Greater Boston audiences are really special. I mean, I may be biased, but I I think that's true. We're tough. We are tough. Yeah, we played the Colonial, and it was uh, you played twice, right? You were uh, there the, the first time. And the Schubert. Yeah, and for me, I mean, I went to, like I said, I went to school, and it's sort of my people, so I feel like I knew who I was talking to when I was doing the show, and it was incredible to perform in that theater where I watched Phantom and watched Les Mis when I was growing up. But the audiences just get it. They got the show because it's it's you know it's, it's blue collar. It's like it's not fancy. It's just like real, and I think that. Boston is very much like that. It's the, the I played that. Boston twice and, yeah. and Providence, and they were three of my favorite theaters to play because, like, like you said, there's a sort of a, uh, a, a darker quality to just how the audience listens yeah. and reacts and gasps. And, and I don't know if it's just me, but it feels like We can feel home, that yeah. on stage. Yeah, for sure. I mean, I was wondering about that because, as you say, you're up there and you're impersonating these stars 
and you're getting this adulation. I mean, tell me that feeling. Tell me what it's like to be you being them on a stage with that kind of response. Just describe that. It's unbelievable. It's like no other show I've ever been in. And I think it's why it went over so well in New York because, you know, being from, these guys from Jersey come see the show and they, they get it. This show is, is about real people, about real events, mm -hmm. and there's something real that happens you know, when they're talking to the audience and the, they get caught up in this story. And uh, when we take it all around the country, and I thought that there would be some cities where this show didn't work, mm -hmm. and I was totally wrong. Yeah. I've played everywhere from Seattle to five cities in Florida, Dallas. I mean, I've been all over the country. And, you know, and now it's playing in New Zealand and South Africa and all these places. It's completely like a worldwide mm -hmm. hit. And it's yeah. just because the, they've written this human story so well. It works everywhere. And now you've played the Colonia, you played the Schubert. Well, now you're going to play the Hanover Theater. Yeah. And this is one gorgeous theater. It sure is. And it is the premiere of this show in Worcester. And I think that that calls for a song. Don't you think so, audience? I think so. Uh-oh. John. John Michael Dias, would you grace us? I mean, if you'd like. I don't have anything prepared, but we'll have to see what we can. <laughs> Just kidding. 